90.3 LPFM. Sancho Loco Show. Hey, we have a, a very, very special guest. And I know that I say that all the time, but I really mean it this time because Anthony, believe it or not, used to do uh, music in the same circle as us back in the days. He's one of the pioneers. Like, I, I consider one of the pioneers of hip-hop in the, the L.A. scene, man. He was, he was doing stuff way before a lot of these cats were doing it. And... Um, you know he had he was part of Brown Town Looters. He uh, did the uh, hip hop show in uh, you know on air, and so he's done a lot of different things. So I want to welcome first. I want to welcome you, and then I want to thank you for coming. Uh, let's let's make sure your mic's on. All right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. So your mic is on. So I welcome Anthony Citric Campos, man. Welcome to the show, brother. Hey, thank you guys for having me, man. Appreciate it. And uh, you know, it's 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 been a it's been a, a honor to uh, you know chat with you on the internet and and just uh, to to uh, know that you you re, you know you were you were willing to come out meant a lot to me, bro. So you know, um, like I like I was telling everybody before, uh, we used to do some of the same shows together back in the days at the Coconut Teasers, the Joint, <laughs> and. Um, I actually still have some of the fights. It's so funny, man, because right before, right before um, you were gonna come on, I was like, man, I, I gotta go back. I gotta backtrack and look at some of the events we did together, <laughs> man. And it was a trip, dude. We we did a few of them together. And um, I know that you know when you're doing gigs, you don't get a chance to chop it up with everybody that often. So we chopped it up a few times when I was doing the stuff with Incognito. And um, I know that uh, you had. I always remember you. I remember Weddle, and I remember. <laughs> I remember another dude with the hat. I forget what his name was. With uh, probably uh, uh, DJ Clear. DJ Clear, yeah, dude. DJ Clear Walker, yeah, man. dude. So yeah. shout out, shout out to uh, Fernando Sal. I know Sal couldn't make it, man, but Sal Rojas from Bradpride.com and Cafe Con Leche. Shout out yeah. to all you guys, DJ Quad. Um, but man, it really took me back. And then I was like, you know. Anthony's doing so much nowadays. He's working on the uh, George uh, Lopez show, and he's he's doing a lot of different acting gigs. And I didn't even know this. I started looking online. <laughs> I, I thought I saw that you did a, even a GTA, right? Yeah, I did some voiceovers for GTA Five. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane, bro. <laughs> you know, and and, and, I, and that's one of my favorite games. You know, I like playing it a lot, but I just uh, uh, every time I'm on there, I'm trying to listen for my voice, but I, I never catch it. And a lot of people always tell me, "Hey, bro." <laughs> I was playing the game and I and, and and I heard you on the way. Is that you? And I go, yeah, man. Hey, you just gotta say yeah, dude. Like it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. if it wasn't you or not. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But um, but you know, did do you let like I'm I'm just curious. Like now that that you've done the GTA thing, do you let your kids play it? Well, I mean, uh, my son's already old. You know, he's already 23. Okay, he he's can going play on 24. It. So you know, he's been playing it for a few years already. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I got, a, I got, a, you know, it's crazy. I got a couple of grandkids. They don't know how to play it yet. They're still little, but you know, eventually they'll probably end up playing it. Who knows? Yeah, who knows, bro? I just mean, gotta let them know it's just a game. <laughs> I, I feel, I feel better now, bro, because I, I just met another fellow grandparent. Man, a lot of people are like, I thought it was, I thought it was too young to be a grandparent. Now, now you're, you're <laughs> yeah, part that's, of the club, that's, bro. That's what everybody always tells me, your grandfather. Like, what do you mean? Your yeah, grandpa, hey, I got two grandkids. <laughs> I know, man. You're young, both of you. <laughs> Thank I, you. I know, man. But um, so, so you know. I know that I know where you come from, but I want to start from the beginning because I want to introduce the listeners to to what you were about, and then we'll get into some of your acting stuff, and then we'll get into some of the stuff that you're doing now. Okay. And okay, so so when you first started rapping, who was who was what some of your influences like uh, when you were growing up? I mean, growing up, we were listening to at that time it was N.W.A. You know, that was that was one of the biggest influences at the time, N.W.A. And then of course, uh, Beastie Boys. Oh yeah, you know, and uh, and Karis One. Those are like the big uh, influences that we were listening to at the time, you know. And uh, we just, you know, balancing it. Oh, of course, uh, De La Soul. Oh you know, right, that, on. that was another, you know, that was another group that we were into. So those, uh, those are uh, kind of, you know, the groups that we started off listening to, and, and kind of got 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 me and uh, and a couple of my boys into rapping, you know. Uh, but we started originally breakdancing, you know, right? Back when Nucleus, you know, jam on it and all that. Well, that was. That was the stuff, man. We were doing all, you know, we're, you know, uh, popping and, force and you know, we were listening to all that. So obviously, that's where it really where it stemmed from. But but the real way where we begin into getting into like rap, like actually, like you know what, I want to try this is yeah, NWA. You know what's and Ice T. You know what's so cool about back in the days, bro. And, and they don't have this now, Angie. Angie, you wouldn't know this, but 
But let's see, let's see. Maybe, maybe. Maybe you might know this. I don't know. Maybe you did your homework. But but back in the days, man, when you used to break dance, you used to just walk up to somebody with a piece of cardboard and be like, What's up? Yeah. Man? Like, is. what's up? Let's, let's do this. So you're throwing it down. Everybody was walking around with their boombox. Yeah, do you remember those? Like yeah. the big old ghetto blasters, dude. Boombox and a, and a, and a piece of cardboard. And, yeah. uh, and that was it. Let's you don't see that battle. anymore. Yeah. yeah, you don't see that anymore. <laughs> like the recycling centers, they didn't like that because everybody had the cardboard out there. You know what yeah. I mean? They were just like, What's going on? But but yeah, man, that was a great time. And so um, did you ever look up to any – I mean, like the, the other day I had uh, Ernie G from Proper Dose uh, right. on the show. And, um, you know, I was asking him who, who was some of his influences. Did any other Latino artists influence you, like, uh, you know, Kid Frost? Well, of like, course, yeah, Frost. You know, that that's when uh, – when by the time uh, Frost came out, though, we were already like – You're already in the game. We were already in the game, but we weren't in the game like that yet. You know what I'm saying? Like like the first time we ever opened up for, for a major act was Kid Frost. Oh, really? yeah. But we were already doing little car shows here and there, you know, and, and we were just kind of like already like doing like trying to cut our little demos, whatever we can do. But that was our first like our first gig as the show was opening up for Kid Frost. Wow. And, and, and uh, Lighter Shader Brown, I believe, too. Oh, cool, at man. That time. Yeah, it was it was it was a you know big car show out there in El Sereno. And uh, um, but he was a big influence on us, you know, of course, because he's being Chicano, he's, you know, he's, and he was uh, he was he was representing uh our culture at the time, you know, and coming from uh, East Los Boyle Heights, you know, that's yeah, where we grew up. So he he had all that on the map, you know, on the on, on the uh, in his first video, La Raza. So that was just like pumped everybody up in, in my neighborhood, you know. And, yeah, and so so like the boys that you first rap with were those boys that you grew up with? Were the were they like your homeboys or were they like you know people that you knew from high school? Um, the ones that you formed like the looters with. Well, one of my one of my um boys was actually from my neighborhood. And uh, he never really rapped, but he was more like the hype man. Yeah. And then he was also the money man. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like the treasurer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, so it was, uh, it was like, it was like that. So he he never really rapped. He started getting uh, like rapping a couple years later, but that was from my neighborhood. But when I hooked up with like DJ Clear, and then my boy Shotgun at the time, it goes by John Doe now. You know, um, those guys they they were just some cats I met through my neighbor. He goes, I know this one guy that's a DJ. He goes and you know you're you're rapping and you know you don't got a DJ you need a DJ you know you guys gonna do a group yeah so he goes I'll hook you up with my boy uh, uh, Oscar and that was his name Oscar but it's, but they call him DJ Clear yeah because Oscar's you know, not a cool DJ name yeah man. exactly you can't so, go yeah. up and be like DJ <laughs> Oscar <laughs> unless you like do like Oscar the Grouch that, yeah, right? that might be cool, exactly you know what I mean but um yeah so so that's that's awesome man so um where did you get the name Citric from. From my, actually the same cat that hooked me up with my DJ, you know. He's, <laughs> okay. He started telling me, you know, like man, because I used to be at a, at all the house parties back then, you know. Every time there was a, <laughs> there was a, you know something cracking, I was there. But the only reason why I was there was because my DJ was DJing. Like, ah. You know what I mean? So, so you piggybacked on him. Yeah, I would go with him and hang out just to chill out. You Dude, know? that's a smart move, man. So we hang out and you know, and I was so I was pretty much at all the parties because of him, and then. uh my boy started telling me, you're like citric acid, bro. This is, you know, you're, you're, you're <laughs> everywhere, dog. Dude, dude that's, that's that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, that's I, 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 I was dying to know that question, dude. I was like, you know, that's – I know that's probably the least relevant, but I was like – one that one was bugging me, dude. I was like, I, where did you get the name from, man? Um, but, yeah, so that's cool. So you, you got the group. You guys started doing shows. Now, I know how hard it is to be an upcoming rapper. So you guys started recording. Did you guys record your own stuff, or did you go out and record somewhere else? Well, in the beginning, when we were trying to cut our demos, we were doing everything in my in my uh, uh, DJ's garage at Clears. We had a little setup. There. He had his turntables there. He had a couple tape recorders. So we were doing it like back and forth, like just kind of dubbing stuff. And he was just doing instrumentals off of little pieces that would be like on a, a like on a record, you know. Oh, like a break beat. Sometimes on a break beat, you know, something like there's no rapping during certain parts. Yeah. So he'd do that and go back and forth, and he he make a whole beat, and then after that, he'll, once he has the whole beat, then we go in there. And, and just and do, do vocals, thing. but you had to do everything in one shot because if yeah. not, you know, it's yeah. like, oh, we gotta go back. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that was that was, that a, was a struggle. It was that rough, was man. Struggle. It was, it was, it was, was rough, rough, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to give like no uh, <laughs> trade secrets out or anything, but I used to use like a I used to use like an old stereo that my mom had, and I used to just like. It was like a two-part stereo, and I take one cassette and just shuffle oh, them around. It was horrible, wow. man. I, I, I shouldn't even share Cut that. Cut it and tape it. People are gonna look at me different now. Hey, but you know, you had to do what you had That's to do. That's how it starts. Yeah. yeah, I know. You had to do. You know, technology wasn't as advanced as it is now, but you could just get a little computer. You could do stuff off your phone now. You know, you I know. Record isn't that, a whole song. Isn't that crazy, dude? Like, you know, back back when we were around, like back when. 
like we had to get all these heavy keyboards. Like when I was a DJ, I had like a, a Dracula coffin, dude. I take it to the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it weighed it like is. it weighed like a hundred pounds. Like I didn't even get paid enough. <laughs> I like I, my back started hurt, but no. <laughs> I mean, no, that was that was like uh, it's insane how times have changed. That's why we had it too in the garage. We had a big old coffin. Yeah, I'm the, telling the, you, dude. The, the turntables with the mixer. <laughs> like, wow. my, mine had cockroaches and stuff. It was crazy, <laughs> man. But um, but uh, yeah, that's cool, man. So uh, you know, we're getting into a little bit of history. But how did you get to uh do the hip hop show at K? Uh, it was a KJLA, right? Yeah, LATV. Yeah. Well, originally, um. What I started doing is uh, I was working with my boy Cashflow at the time, that which also became part of Brown Sound Looters after, and he, uh, you know, he raps too. So we started doing stuff with music, and then um, we started we started uh, uh, doing this uh, uh, public access in East LA, which was called at the time the show was called Cruising with La Raza. My boy DJ Ray used to host that. He went to Arizona to start another show. He left us, me and my boy Caster hosting, but it was all oldies. And just lowrider footage. That's all it okay. was. And then we would host it. We'd have, in, you know, and then we started, we started like, well, why don't we bring in people and interview them? So we started bringing in like Larry Shader Brown. And we started bringing mm-hmm. all these people that we knew that, that were connected with the music industry that, that was kind of blowing up at the time. We started bringing them in. And the show started doing good. But then they started getting mad because because they were like, well, it's supposed to be all oldies and lowrider. But now you guys are bringing all this hip hop and stuff. Why don't you guys do your own show? And uh, and then you guys can still host this one, and then do this one. I'll do a, just straight hip hop stuff on the side. We said, all right. So we started doing a show called Underground Flavor. Mm. That's where it all started. So we did a few episodes of that, and it was just like two. It was just a video camera, and then two VHSs. We, we would uh, go out and do interviews, and then we, we we started calling all these companies and started saying those videos. Oh and man, we, yeah, we wow. would double them together. We'd do like a real Mickey Mouse job with public <laughs> access. So. Nobody was tripping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't. Then, it wasn't like now where you yeah, had the exactly. internet, right? Now, like, so, yeah. So, so you, if we would have had all the equipment that we, back then that we got now, even just with a laptop or a phone, uh, we would have been killing it, man. So, so that's 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 another thing that I want to segue into. Now, I read on an article that uh, you did with Stilo Magazine. Shout out to Jesse. Yeah. That um, you could potentially think about starting it again. Is that still a thought or you know yeah, i mean it's still a thought you know it, we, you know we, we 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 uh we've been talking about it you know like with a couple of different people uh uh i don't know if you're familiar with jay doves i am yeah, from, i am yeah, yeah, yeah jay doves jay a doves, good friend of ours I've been, man. I've been talking to jay doves too because he, he he for the longest he was telling me to let's get together and let's do something so we kind of have a, we had a couple of meetings but just you know his schedule my schedule is just you know, sometimes it's hard, but is, is we really di- want to bring you back home. Is he at a different station now, J Dubs? Uh, I think he's at Mega right now. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I I knew that he was at the other uh, Latino, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they, okay. they shut that one down, like, or they turned it into Mega or something like that. But yeah, he's still he's still doing his thing. Him and his girl. What up, J Dubs? Yeah. How you doing, man? Yeah, be shout out to J Dubs. You know? Yeah, man. I got I got to plug up J Dubs and have lunch or something. But okay, cool, man. So you know, uh, who was the coolest? Rapper that you that you met that you that you looked up to or that you worked with, yeah. Oh man, I mean one of the one of the because when we did the hit when we did the hip hop show, you met everybody, right? Yeah, we met man, we met so many people. It was just crazy, man. It so was probably, just like, I got to meet so many cats, but one of the most probably uh, um, memorable interviews that I remember was with Karis one. Oh yeah, yeah he's, he's yeah. the pioneer, the yeah. teacher, yeah. man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and then uh, I kind of made him cry a little bit. You Did know? you really? Yeah, because you know we brought up some old stuff about Scott LaRock, you know his DJ and you know, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, so man. It kind of like like it, it took him back a little bit. Yeah, so you can see, you know, and uh, so that's I remember. I'm always gonna remember that. You know. What did you learn from him? Man, I just I I learned so much. I mean, you know, you know, it's crazy because a lot of people that 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 know him, a lot of people, there's a lot of people don't have good stuff to say about him. A lot of people are like. They they say you know like he's arrogant and all this, but with us it was just it, I I never got that from him you know he was really cool and uh, he was really humble about things and uh, he just uh, he, you know he one thing uh, I remember he, he him telling us just you know it's just you you just have to uh, enjoy life for what it is man and uh, don't take don't take nothing for granted everything you do in this world man you know good and bad just. Take it all in and uh, and strive for bo- for better for better you know and very, just keep keep going man very humble and very, very humble yeah. yeah very knowledgeable I mean Anthony's career is just insane I mean if you if you guys are listening right now I mean it's just so much so much to talk about um, because I want to segue in from the KGLA show to how you got into acting and again I read I read in another article that 
um, it really was something that you had thought about and then you, you gradually made your way up into it. You did a gig here, you did a gig there, and then you started uh, doing it. Uh, you started doing it again. Yeah. Um, what, what landed you the role with George Lopez? Just the grind, man. And Grinding? Yeah. The grind, you know, the grind, connecting with people. And, of course, God, man, you know. That's God, awesome, God, man. God's always, you know, watch my back. He's always had my back, never let me down. So Shout out to Jesus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's been a long journey. And it's been a long journey, you know. But the thing, the key thing is don't lose faith, you know, because, yeah. you know, it's a struggle, you know. And not, nothing happens overnight. A lot of people think you jump in the game and it's just going to happen overnight. That's true. And, and that's a miscon misconception yeah. of people, right? Yeah, it, it doesn't happen overnight. It it, it takes a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of hard work. But uh, yeah, all the grinding and just connecting with people over the years, you know, and just is yeah. George is George pretty cool to work with. I mean, yeah, yeah he's yeah. a really humble cat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we, get, we got along. We got along real good. You know that since the first pilot, we uh, our chemistry was on point. The producers saw that right away, so you know they like they took it around with him. Is he is he always joking like he does on his stand up? Or... All day, yeah. All day, uh, that's, that's yeah awesome. nobody, nobody's safe. Nobody's, nobody's safe, safe there. Yeah, you're gonna get <laughs> so, roasted. So he, he even wrote a song for me. Yeah. No you know way. Are you serious? Yeah, he's just clowning around because I mean, he calls me Citro. Oh, so no he calls way. it the Citro song. Yeah, he's just that's funny. He's clowning man. around. <laughs> Do we need <laughs> we... guitar and he just starts starts? He, he plays guitar. Yeah, he plays guitar. Yeah. So no he, way. Yeah, he starts uh starts creating one during when we have a lot of downtime. <laughs> he'll sit there and then he'll just start creating. <laughs> that that is dope. That is funny, man. But it's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, it's good comedy. We don't know, yeah. man. It's good times. You know, is, every time we kick it. Is it like long hours on the set? Do you have to like you know? Yeah. Uh, sometimes you know. It's, there's. I mean, it balances out. There's days. You know, obviously George because George is the star of the show. It's the show. He's got more, more, more hours on it. You know, so his days are extra long than mine. Right. But. Um, I have my short days, you know, and then I have my really long days, you know, where I'll do like 12, 13 hours, you know, 14. Now I'm going to hit you with you something know? funny, dude. I'm going to hit you with something funny. I watched an episode and you were talking to that actress and you were reading a book with about algebra. You remember? Oh, Lunel, yeah. Okay, what, what, what's her name again? Lunel. Lunel. Yeah, shout okay. out to Lunel. Lunel, Lunel is so cool, dude. I, I, yeah, I seen her on, I seen her actually on Borat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. right. And so... My question to you is, did you kiss her? You know what? Don't no no we, don't lie, bro. You gotta no, tell the truth. We, we, we never <laughs> got to that point. We never like it's like the way they did it is uh they it, it's basically we got we just did it was a little peck and then you just stay there and then they, they just cut it. I'm gonna be honest with you, Linnell. If it was me, I would have kissed you <laughs> and I would have I would have went well, all the way. Originally on the in the script, that's what it was. We were supposed to go at it like hard. Like, so who, so who, who pulled out? I, I don't know what happened. No, the, nobody pulled out. It's just they just kind of like they changed it. The, the 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 writers, you know, they I guess they because you know it's TV land. Yeah. So it was a little bit more. They had to keep it a little bit more PG. But originally in the script, we were supposed to go at it because because if I was an actor, bro, I'm not gonna lie to you, you dude. Like if, I, I would take advantage, bro. Like anytime I could cop a cheap fill, I think I would just I think I would just do it. No, I'm just kidding, Valerie. If you're listening, I'm just playing with you. I would not do that. I'm, I'm, uh, but anyways, man, like if I were to look at all your movies, cause you got a lot of different movies. If I was to look at all your movies and I know that people would probably, you know, beg to differ on this, but idiocracy is it for me, dude. Like I love idiocracy, dude. I love, I love the wig. Yeah. I, I love how you played that character. Man, that shit was crazy. Yeah, dude. It was, it was good times, man. It and, was, it was, uh, yeah, that wig was, was insane though. It was, yeah. Was, then we were filming during, we we're right in the middle of like summertime in Austin, Texas. Oh, I was hot. in Texas? Yeah, we were on a sound stage, really hot. So they would have to pick up the wig from the back during, during breaks and then throw, there's like an air, air conditioner in the back, like a tube, just, you know, just for the sound stage. And then when, then when they start filming, they shut it down. So when, during, when, when we're not during takes, between takes, they would turn it on, so I had to sit there and put the big old tube <laughs> oh, in the back wow. of my head. <laughs> <That's crazy laughs> they had to keep me from sweating, yeah, sweating out because it was hot, man. But man. we had some good times with that movie too, filming. Man. Um, um, what did the set really look all trashy like that? Was it like because on Idiocracy, I don't know if you've seen it, Angie, but yeah. it, it like goes backwards <laughs> and like the whole like dummies are the smart people. Like it, it's such a great movie, but um, like was it all like weird like that, or is that just like graphics? Most of it was uh, was reality. We were we were we were filming out on uh, it was a Fox it's a, it's a Fox Studios out in Austin, Texas, but it's an old uh, airport. Okay. So the sound stages are hangars. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so when we did the outdoor parts, they were like they built like the White House. It was like half a White House, you know, all trashed out. Oh with wow! With swimming pool in the front yard and all. That. But it was just in the back. There's nothing there. 
you know, and then it was just in the back, they, just, they put a, a, a green screen. Now, now when you first, I know because, you know, you were doing the hip hop thing and when you transitioned into acting, when you, when you hit these big, large hangers and you're out there acting in these big studios, at first, was it like a shocker, like to, to step into such a big stage with cameras yeah, and lights? Yeah, no, it was, it was intimidating, man. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like before Idiocracy, I had only done, I had done a couple of background parts, you know, like yeah. I worked, uh, you know, just like, you know, doing the cholo roles, you know, like, yeah, but yeah. background in the prison scene, you know, like simple stuff like that, like one day, two days. But um, when, but I had never done anything like that, like, you know, like working in a, you know, like the full blown set like that with all the crew people. And it was just, it was just insane because I, because like I said, what I've done before, it, it was uh, independent stuff. And, you know, there was the, it's not, nothing, uh, like it was still good budgets, but it's just nothing like the way uh, Idiocracy and stuff, because that's the Fox and all that, you know. Now I haven't talked to uh, I have, you know, I have another buddy in the same circle, Ronan Gray. Have you? you yeah, yeah, it's the homie. Yeah. yeah, I I haven't talked to him in a minute, but is he is he still acting? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, I haven't talked to him in in, in a while too, but I see him on Instagram, and, and uh, I know uh, uh, he's been working on music too because he does music. Yeah, shout and out to was, Ronan, man. You know, yeah, big shout out to Ronan. You know, that's the homie from Boyle Heights, also. Yeah, man, your hometown, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You rep a lot of Islos, right? I, I've yeah. seen you on your social media. So, what does that mean to you? Like, what does it mean to represent your community? I mean, it's 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 a trip because it's like, especially now, because I got to do two parades yeah. for East LA. I did the Christmas parade and then the 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 Mexican Independence Day parade. They have they have every year, you know. And so to go back now and then do you know, and coming from that from that those streets I grew up and going down the street on the you know, and it's just like. Like it, like it's crazy. Like to me, to rep my city like that, you know, it's just, it's you just, take it everywhere it, yeah, you. it's like, yeah, exactly. It's like I, I really don't have words for it other than it's just, it's a great feeling, you know. That, that. Was it was it interesting going down the parade and seeing? Because you have family friends that you grew up with there. I yeah. mean, and you're in the parade, and now you've got all these great roles. Everybody's recognizing you, yeah. and so was it a, was it a good feeling to you know finally reach that point to where you're in a parade and you're like, man, I've reached the top. Of, of my yeah, because it was like you know, it was kind of like almost like the like the hometown hero type thing come home, yeah. you know. And, and it's like so we got to do that, so it was just like to me, it was very inspirational. And then not just to me, but to my people that I had around me with me, you know, that that were their part of the team. They they got to experience that, and they were just like blown away. And and it was just it was just like a, it was just a I don't know, it was just a beautiful feeling, you know, just to be going down the street. I I love our culture, but um, I love our culture, but um, the the one thing that uh. I wanted to say was the one thing I trip out on is like how um, the cities are like um, moving things into West Los and East Los. They'll put like a Starbucks there. They're trying to like yeah. build these nice apartments and push the people out, man. Yeah, man. I, I, that, that, that bums me out, man, because, uh, you know, uh, some of these apartment complexes that they're building, people – uh, you know they can't afford them. They like, yeah, and, and it it just like it's unfortunate. But anyways, it's ridiculous, man. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Happening everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. happening everywhere. Yeah, it's not just yeah. It's, the Boyle Heights is, yeah. going, is going through, especially because downtown is right there. Down, you know, it's, so it's like they're trying to kick everybody out little by little. You know, it's, yeah, it's crazy man. It's it's crazy how yeah. that happens, man. But uh, uh, I just think it's unfortunate, man, because we 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 have uh, deep roots in a lot of these cities. Like it, even in Santa Ana, you know where where I grew up. They're doing it down there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's and happening. It's happening. Yeah they're, yeah, they're little by little. They're just, you know, they're just trying to, you know, it's, it's all, it's all money. You know, they, it's, they're, they're just trying to, trying to, you know, like clean it up. I get it, what they're trying to do, clean it up. But they're, but at the same time, they're, they're messing up a lot of homes. You know, a lot of people that can barely afford to live. You know, they're, right. they're barely paying the rent, and then now, now you're trying to skyrocket the rent. You know, like it's yeah. ridiculous. You know, but let's get into some more positive, man. So. You work with Luke Wilson. You work with Terry Crews, who's like uh, the funny guy to me, yeah. man. It's, it's Terry. Yeah, shout out to Terry, man. He's, yeah. he's hilarious. Is he, is he a clown, man? All day, man. That, that's awesome, yeah. man. Real, real humble dude, man. Really? So, is, yeah. is he big in person? Yeah, yeah, he's huge, man. <laughs> and, he's, and is he a great breakdown? Because I see him on yeah, like. Yeah, no, he, he really, yeah, he really can dance, man. Dude. That's, he really can dance. That's his, that's his thing, man. So it's like. That's man, awesome, man. Yeah, he has fun with it. And he, man, he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a real cool cat. You work with uh, Eva Longoria. Yeah, we did uh, Harsh Times. Harsh with, Times. With her and uh, Christian Bale and Freddie Rodriguez. And Emilio Rivera. Emilio Rivera. That's the homie. Shout out to Emilio. Yeah. The show! Man, that was like one of my favorite songs, bro. And I'll tell you why, dude. I love that song. 
because it has, I think it's Billy Squire. Yeah. Is that Billy Squire, yeah, yeah. dude? See? No. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know. What's up, dude? Classic. Yeah, man, that's classic, dude. Yeah. And um, you know what, man? You have a lot of songs, bro. I, I like this one song. I didn't get a chance to edit it, but if anybody's on the internet, check it out. It's like, it's made with, if all my Latino people will know it, Chespirito. Have you seen the show Chespirito? <laughs> you, know you know what I'm talking about, dude? <laughs> yeah, so he made a song, dude. It's like, it's got this cool video. I like that song, dude, because I like the beat. But um, that's just me. Uh, if I was to choose, I like that one, and I like the uh, Brown Town Looter Anthem, the one um, Follow Us. I don't know if you remember that one. The hook's yeah. like "Follow Us." You, you oh did... yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I know. Yeah, it was yeah. on. It was on the on the fifth. Hey, bro, don't don't be don't be acting all star on me, bro. You remember your songs, bro. <laughs> I, hey, sometimes I don't. Bro. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I'm, I'm messing with you, bro. But it, I think it was on the on the fifth battalion compilation. Yeah, right? yeah. Was it on that one? I think it might have been. I was on that one too. Might have been that one. The Never Ending Battle one. I think so. Yeah, that was that was such a cool compilation for Steve. Rest in peace, Steve. Yeah, man. rest in peace. Yeah. But um, yeah, man. So. Angie's got some questions. What's up, Angie? Yeah, I'm curious. Why Spanish rap? Was that intentional or did it just happen? Well, originally, we, we I started doing a, a little bit of Spanish since, since I started rapping. I would just, like, mix it in, you know, a verse, you know, half a verse. Mix it in with a half an English verse. And because, uh, you know, at that time, Melo Manes, you know, big shout out to Melo, you know. He, Melo! He, he was doing his thing, and a lot of people heard Mentirosa and stuff like yeah. that. But he had some other songs in the underground that were hardcore. That, that were like some sick Spanish. So I started picking up on a lot of that. You know what I'm saying? So, and then, you know, other groups that came out through Mexico, I would listen to like Otro Machete and stuff like that. And um, little by little over the years, I would always just, you know, bust a verse in Spanish here and there. And then all of a sudden in two, uh, 2004, we got the opportunity to do an all Spanish album with, uh, with a record label called uh, uh, Balboa Records from out here, originally uh, from Mexico, uh, known as Muzart. And um, they gave us that they, they gave us that shot. They gave us a record deal, and we dropped the whole all Spanish album, and uh, and we just took it around with it. It took us a whole nother level. It took us to Sao Gigante, and oh man, you, you know, got yeah, we did we did a whole Spanish circuit in Miami wow. on radio, TV, everything. It was crazy. Yeah. Do you have plans to continue working on music, or do you want to focus more on acting? You know what I mean. The music just comes when it comes. You know, if, if the opportunity comes, I haven't really had a chance to really just go to the studio and hang out and yeah. like this vibe. You know, like I got my producer Vic Damone. You know, sh you know, shout out to Vic, and um, he out he he does a lot of production for us and he has his own studio. And uh, sometimes we go over there and we vibe. You know, we we'll listen to beats and he'll come out like, "Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that?" And then I'll start, "Yeah, that's dope, dope." He starts putting them aside. But then he starts hitting me. Hey, well, what's up? You gonna write to him? I know, know, dude. You but know what? You I know just what bites? Chance, man. You know, you know what bites for me? Like as an artist now, like people will tell me that, like the youngsters will be like, I'm, I'm doing a show. I mean, I'm doing a, a song called IGMOB with, with uh, a group that I started with my cousin. Shout out to Big Mo and Trip. But what I was getting at was, it takes a lot for me to get going now because yeah. when I was a youngster, I used to rap about what was happening, yeah, what was exactly, popping. Yeah. You know, what I mean, like if I was partying, whatever, yeah. woo. -woo now I'm like, dude, what am I going to rap about? Like, yeah, exactly. I'm rap about my kids? <laughs> like, I wake up, I got kids with diapers. You know what I mean? Like, I can't do that. Time, times, times change, you know? Times, times change and, you know, your your you know your life changes. And um, and sometimes, yeah, it, 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 sometimes it's hard, man. Like, yeah. like, sometimes, like, I find myself in the same situation. Or, like, when I do go to the studio or, like, sometimes uh, I get hired to do a song for, for, for a television or for a movie, a specific song. So now I'm sitting there like, okay. But you know, a lot of times they'll come, they'll, they'll give me the concept, and so that makes it a lot easier, you know. But well, when you're just trying to create from scratch, and you're just like, man, now I got to sit there for like an hour and trying to mar marinate on this on this beat and vibe on it, and just start coming up with stuff. But it takes me a little bit longer to come up with stuff now. You know, it's you know, I don't know, maybe because I'm older. No, I, I feel the same way, dude. Like I, I see brain serious. cells or something. <laughs> 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 no, but you know what? You know what? Um, going going back to uh, you creating. Uh, songs for shows, the Squidbillies. Did you do a song for that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did the intro. <laughs> yeah. For, for for the episode I was on. Yeah, and so we'll play that. We'll play that when we get off. We did the Squidbillies, and then I seen another one. Uh, was it for GTA or no? Or, or am I am I tripping? Uh, no, nah, well, I don't think it was. We'll just give you that credit anyways. Cause we did because we did some stuff for Idi uh, Idiocracy. Oh, okay. okay that's and, what it and was. Silicon Valley. That's what it was, dude. Yeah. Because I was I was uh, looking up your songs, and I was like. 
man, you got a, you got some songs that you did for like shows. So that's that's awesome. Do you get royalties yeah. from that? Stuff? Yeah, that's yeah. so awesome, dude. Yeah, that's probably like the easiest paycheck I'll ever get. Man. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I'm, dude. I'm not even gonna lie, man. No, like like you just yeah. sit back, you did it. I would I would you know never... because it's funny because when that album it did what it did, we toured for like I don't know a, a year, maybe two years with it. We did a lot. We did a lot of shows and stuff. And uh, it, after that, it just sat there, you know. And we just we didn't push it. It was on iTunes, whatever. It sounds on iTunes, not only because of idiocracy. It, 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 yeah. We get we get a lot of sales from that. But it sat there for a lot of years. We I wasn't gonna do nothing with it no more. I was like, whatever about it. And then all of a sudden, I get the part with idiocracy. Next thing you know, my judge wants to hear some of my music. He goes, I know you do music. What do you no got? No way. Yeah. He goes. We sat down. We're eating lunch. He goes, I know you do music. What do you got? And yeah. then I go, you know what? I got some CDs, and, 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 but back in my room tomorrow, I'll, I'll bring you a CD, and I'm set. My, my judge asked me for the no CD. No way. Everything just yeah. falls into place, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, That's like, yeah, that, exactly. Like, when it's, when it's meant to be, it's just meant to be. Now, you know? now, for the listeners that don't know who Mike Judge is, he created Beavis and Butthead. He, uh, King of the Hill. King of the Hill, like all your favorite cartoons. That's who he's referring to, man, and that's that's awesome that he uses your music. Yeah. Um. So you have a game for him? Yeah, you're up for it. All right, you up yeah. for a game, dude? <laughs> All right, so hold on. I I, I got it. I need the appropriate, the appropriate uh Stupid music for this. <laughs> so <I'm here. laughs> All right, okay, man. Let, 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 what? Let me let me let me set up the scene. Hold on, real I gotta, quick. This got to right. feel. Hold up. <laughs> Ready for some dumb, stupid questions? All right, all right. Okay, you ready? Wait, hold up. <laughs> right, he, he's not ready. You he ready ain't ready for, for your questions. You ain't ready for this. Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, you ain't ready for it. All right. <laughs> My bad. Some quick, fast questions. That's right. right <laughs> Unfortunately, we're out of budget for prizes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll write you an IOU. <laughs> all right. Oh, Misty froze up. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right. Okay. Listen up, okay? Because these are these are tough. Let me let me turn up your these mic a bit. Tough. All right, are you ready? Go. Would you rather wear someone else's dirty underwear or you or use someone else's toothbrush? Ooh. Think about that. Ooh. That's a good one. That's but, a tough uh, one. Right ooh, there. Yeah. <laughs> ooh. I think I think I'll walk away from that one. Yeah, I know, right? Um, man, I mean, I I got an answer, right? Yeah, <laughs> I would just go with the underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty underwear, guys. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay. Fill in the blank. Have I? I have never. I have never. Um, I have never ate broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I hate vegetables. The secrets, they're coming out. They're coming out, dude. All right. Would you rather? Ha- okay, listen up. This is tricky. Would you rather have a finger, a finger as a tongue, or have tongues as fingers? Wow. Wait, that's a good one, dude. That one threw me yeah, off, think man. Think about it. Repeat that again real quick. <laughs> Would you rather have a finger as a tongue or have tongues as fingers? Man. You have to think about this, son. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. Oh, man. That one kind of shocked that, me, too, yeah, bro. I don't know how to answer that one. I probably I probably have to go with... Uh, with a, 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 a finger on the, on the tongue. Yeah. So I better just flip everybody off with, with, okay. with the tongue. Well, well, I think it works good with the ladies, too, right? Yeah, too. Yeah. So yeah. Either, way, either way, so it's a win-win. It's a win-win for everybody. All you right, can eat right. tacos. You can hold the tacos. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Okay, next one. Tacos or carne asada fries? Oh, uh, man. It depends where the carne asada fries are from, you know. If they're from East Los all day, man. Yeah, you know, but uh, I, I, yeah, you know, I, I would just stick to the tacos. Tacos, yeah, all right, all yeah. right. I'm trying, I'm trying to watch my figure, even though it ain't going anywhere. But, you know, <laughs> trying tacos to watch are always good. <laughs> okay, next. I think I have the best blank. What are your? Hey, secrets? keep it PG, bro. Uh, keep it secrets? PG. <laughs> I think I have the best smile. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Cynical face. That's right, man. That's that's trademark. <laughs> All right, this last one, okay? It's a mushy one. Who's the last person you said I love you? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. The last person. That, oh, you know what? That's, it depends who you who you're talking about. You know. You know the last person. <laughs> the last person. Then it would have to say my grandson. There you go. <laughs> All right, dude. <laughs> Good job, man. <laughs> All right, so let's get into uh, one of the songs you did for uh, the Squidbillies, man. If you if you guys ever watched the cartoon, the Squidbillies, uh, he did this song with Pueblo, Pueblo Cafe. I'm tongue tied right now because uh, <laughs> I have uh, fingers for tongues. Right. Into the Sancho Loco show, and I have 
Citric, Anthony Citric Campos in the building, a.k.a. What other names you go by, bro? I go by Citrico Cinico, uh, Citro. That's what George, George uh, Lopez calls me. Citro. Shout out to George Lopez. Yeah, shout Citro. out to the jefe, George Lopez, el mas chingon. I, I got I got to hear your song about a man one day. So, George, you got to call in, man, and let us hear that song. Yeah, he might just he might just pull out his guitar and play it for you live. Hey, bro. <laughs> that would be awesome, bro, if, if we got that. But um, so let's uh let's get into uh some of the stuff that you're going to do, man. We we've been telling everybody what you did. We just heard Squid Billies uh right now, which was an awesome song. I, I, and uh, you said there was a story behind that. You had to get that in like in a short period of time, right? Yeah, cause uh, um, that the last minute they just hit me up, you know, saying uh, we, we did, you know, we 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 had just finished turning in the voices, of, you know, all my all my parts for it, and then uh, they said, you know what, uh, would be dope if you could come with a song, you know, like a little intro for for your episode. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm like, you know, we you got to turn it in by eight a.m. the next morning, and this, and this is like maybe like eight o'clock at night, you know, the night before. So we're like thinking, we're like, well, what can we go? So we had a like pretty much. Pull up the the, the 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 intro from YouTube, put it on a screen, and we just went through all kinds of beats and just trying to go all like it took us like at least four to five hours just to find the right beat. Wow, you know man. because that'll go with the intro, you know. Where, you where have did to go Squ- with it? Where did the uh, Squid Billies use it at? Like, did they use it on a show or like uh, was it like um, in a back? Like, where? where no, it was uh, for the intro of, the, of that episode. Oh, that's so awesome! So it man. opened up. It opened up. I don't know if you if you're, if you're familiar with uh, Squid Billies when it opens up. It starts, it starts off with the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's playing the radio, and then as, as the radio kicks in, it goes. It does that, that of course that little frequency uh, sound, and then all of a sudden. My vo- my vocal just comes in and it just. Oh, that's in. so awesome, dude! Yeah, so they they set it up they set it up nice. It looks like really good. So what are you working on now, bro? I mean, cause because you've done all this great stuff and everybody that's watching, cause I got a lot of great comments right here. Like um, I got Josh saying if you're gonna bring back the hip hop show, uh, Shannon is enjoying the show. Um, shout out to Johnny Stampanato for listening. Linda Rojas wants to know if there's a season two. Uh, Alex and Linda Rojas. I wonder if there's going to be another season of Lopez. What are you doing now, man? Uh, these days, man, I just uh, I just been uh, working on my clothing brand. You know, we got a, a new brand that I, that I've been pushing called Solid Kings, and of course Solid Queens for all the ladies. All right, all <laughs> there right. you go, there you go. <laughs> you know, so so we're we're working on that. You know, you can, for more information, you can always log on to SolidKings.com, and uh, that you see some of the stuff that we got right now. Um, I, I need to update it a little bit more now with the hoodies because of course it's getting cold. So now we got some hoodies coming out. So, um, but yeah, I've been working on that and, you know, shout out to Pete and Don and, and Vic Damone and uh, Goon and, and uh, Taker and everybody just been helping with the brand, you know, the whole, the whole team, you know, my homie Blur, you know, uh, Will, everybody just putting in work, you know, cause it doesn't happen. It just it doesn't, you know, like I can only do so much with it, you know, right. but, but without the team, it just doesn't go down. You know? Yeah. You're, you're only as good as your yeah, team. That's, so, that's totally so, true, man. You know, big shout out to them. You know, they've been holding me down and stuff. So. You know, and, and, and just it just helping me a lot, man. So that's what we're doing right now. And of course, also we're trying to do, you know, see what's up with the hip hop show, trying to bring it back. You know, obviously I'm I'm just trying to, you know, just trying to do different uh, different independent projects. I got a couple of movies that that I can't really talk about yet, but that, that I'm gonna be working on for, oh, for man. juicy stuff, nice. juicy yeah, stuff, so, you know, man. So, you know, I, just, I just signed on for a couple, you know, a couple of projects. There's one that, that for sure that we signed on. It's called uh, Streets of Money, and I play uh, a Colombian kingpin for. So, be looking out for that. That should, that should be out like sometime uh, mid uh, 2018, and then um, at yeah, the but, same time, I'm trying to work some independent stuff, like some reality show type stuff. You know? I saw that you like documentaries, right? Yeah. So you're thinking about doing a documentary? What if if you were to do a documentary? Like if if there's any investors out there looking to uh, contribute to Citrix uh, documentary fund, uh, just contact them, man. But <laughs> if if uh, you were to do a documentary. What would you do? But would you do about East Los? Would you do it about our culture? Would you do it about something you're passionate about? Man, that's 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 a good one, man. Yeah, there's <laughs> yeah, a lot of things, a lot of things to talk about. There's so much stuff that you can do these days, you know. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And documentaries are big, you know. Uh, Netflix is 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 you know putting out money for a lot of good content, you know. So you know, and, and so is Amazon and and Hulu and all these. But um, man, there's so much stuff. But yeah, I would I would definitely love to do something maybe. 
maybe uh, even like we're doing this about the hip hop show, you know, maybe yeah. a documentary on on uh, on uh, you know L.A. West Coast hip hop, you know, yeah. and just but you know in general it, all hip hop, but you know basic, but focus more on the West Coast of it. You know? Yeah, that's that's and, awesome, and man. And of course, yeah, the the maybe something on the. On Spanish hip hop, I would like to do something maybe sometime too. I, you know, I think that's I think there's that's a, a great avenue to go down, man. Yeah, you Mike. know, right now there's a lot of cats that are blowing up, like you know, like my boy Sekan, you know, out there in from Guadalajara, and he's blowing up all over the world now, you know, and and his all his is all Spanish hip hop, you know, and he's one of the youngsters right now that are that are that's really doing it out there. Yeah. Does he does he acting like when you're doing these gigs, it requires you to travel a lot, right? So do you get to travel to different countries? Uh, you know what? I haven't I haven't had a travel as far as for work. Yeah. You know, other than when we were doing music, you know, like right. just doing stuff like that. But for acting, now nah, everything's been in, in, in the U.S. I like, yeah, I'll travel, but it's within the U.S. Within the U.S. Yeah. Right on, man. So, uh, if you guys want to, you know, get a hold of um, what's your website for the clothing again? It's uh, solidkings.com. Solidkings.com, man. Then, uh, so you were saying somebody was asking about uh, about another season of Lopez? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Al Alex Rojas and Linda Rojas is asking if if there's another season coming out. Yeah. You know, um, I can't I can't tell you for sure when it's coming out, but yeah, be looking out. It will be coming it's out. It's coming. It's coming. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's not gonna be with TV Land. That's been official. You know, as far as from what I know right now, it's, but they're working on uh, on uh, from what I hear, they're. they're Words are Netflix, maybe I don't know. Yeah, that'd be cool. You know what I'm saying? So you know, we'll just keep our fingers crossed. And uh, but I think uh, I think there the there will be a, a season three of Lopez because I know George and the writers they they, they uh, they're really digging it. They said there's uh, there's they're still not done with it. It's not there. So I think it's a great you know? show, man. It has a lot of has a lot of potential to even you know if it goes on Netflix, I think it'd be awesome oh, to like. Yeah. You know, I think it'd be more accessible to everybody. Platform, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I think I, so I think too, man. Be, I think it'd be way better because now you can just watch it on your phone when you have time. You know? Yeah, it's so much exactly. accessible. You know, so I think I think that probably be the best bet. You know, and no, I and, think I'm, and, I'm, and at the same time we're working on some other stuff, like with my publicist people and my management, you know, and trying to trying to get like my own thing uh, as far as like, like maybe the, we were talking about doing a reality show about myself but it's really more focused on the brand on solid keys you know like following me basically maybe all the what i'm doing with the team you know so it's basically yeah. just following us on our little journey that we're doing you know like what does solid key mean well, why that name solid solid keys it was because I used, I, I used to work with another company for a while you know for a couple of years and i really pushed hard on that and uh, I, I and I only did it. Well, I mean, I did it because I believed in the guy's dream, and then also, um, you know, the, the the brand was just, you know, it was just like I just, I just, I liked, I liked everything that he stood for, and uh, and so we we pushed hard, and I was supposed to be a partner in it. Long story short, that didn't happen. You know, he uh, a lot of a lot of shady stuff went down at the last minute. Yeah. So I ended up starting my own stuff, and because we always use the word solid for everything, you know, yeah. and I would always tell him we need to get a contract. So we can make our partnership solid, you know, and we, we need to awesome. make it, you know, and, and it's always been a thing, you know, like I like working with solid cats, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, stuff like that. So it, that's always been a word, you know, like, you know, that homie right there solid. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? If you're, if you're solid, you're a key. Yeah, you're a queen. Definitely. That's you know pretty cool, so man. You, you, you're straight up, you know, and like I always tell people, man, don't ever, the one thing I hate is, is people to lie to me. Yeah. That's you know it, bro. I'm, I'm sold up. on a shirt, bro. I'm sold on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. I just tell people, don't lie to me, man. Just be straight up with me. Be solid. Keep it 100 from the jump. Keep it real. And, and be yeah, solid. And, 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 and yes, and, exactly. I, and, and, and I'll be as solid as they come to you. That's it. You know, and I'm because I'm, cause I'm and very think, loyal. And that's what I think that has brought so much success to you because you're a solid man. You know, you've been working and yeah. grinding, and here you are. Yeah. yeah and, and, you know, it's, it's been a constant battle. But, yeah, we, we just keep we just keep sticking to the grind, and that's it. You know, so shout out to all my solid people out there, solid kings and queens. You know, like we always say, loyalty is royalty. Uh, yeah. Johnny Stampanato says, we need more raza in the media. Keep it rolling, Citric. Shout out to you, Johnny. Um, Shout out, man. Gracias. Um, what's, what's one piece of advice? Because there's a lot of people that look up to you, and, and you might not be aware of that, but there's a lot of people that see an individual like you, and they say, hey, you know what? That individual looks like my family. It looks like me, you know? And, you know, there's a lot of people that are on the grind, and, and, and fortunately – in life, like when I was coming up in the music industry, nobody taught me how to, you know, go through the right channels. And so I had Navigate, to, yeah, yeah I, I had to, I had to do things from the ground up. What's something, what's a piece of advice that you can give, you know, young uh, men out there or, or women uh, when, you know, they're looking to get into the industry, 
that they could jump ahead five spaces without having to grind so hard? Like, what what's a good solid piece of advice? I mean, uh, the only advice I could give you, man, that really like to anybody out there trying to do it is just is is uh, don't lose faith. If you really really want to do something, whether it's acting or whatever it is, just don't lose the faith and just stay, you know, stick to what you're trying to do. But at the same time, you got to be realistic about stuff, you know, and it's not going to happen overnight. It's not. There's no shortcut to this. There, there isn't. There, there's not even a formula to this, honestly, because, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I could sit here and say, yeah, I got discovered by accident, but at the end of the day, was it really an accident? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I got discovered because of Sal Rojas. He, oh, really? They, yeah, they hit me up on Brown Pride through, for Idiocracy. No and way. Sal Roja delivered the message to me. Sal, wow. man. Dude, Sal's, me, yeah, from Sal's changing yeah. people's lives, bro. <laughs> you just never know, but yeah. you have to be prepared. Yeah, you and just you have to be prepared. Though. You were, yeah. I just, you know, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, every day, every day grinding and doing what yeah. I doing what I had to do, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and just keep, you know, just every day, just trying to perfect what you, whatever you're trying to do, you know, it doesn't matter what, whatever you're trying to do, just, uh, if that's really what you want to do, just, you know, try to perfect it as much as possible. I mean, I can't say that I that I've really tried to perfect the acting because I never really was. I mean, I always wanted to be in entertainment. I wanted to do music, but the acting kind of just like I don't know. It just it was just weird the way the acting came came in yeah. came into effect. So, but the only thing I can say is just hey man, just stay on your grind. That's it. Just stay on your grind. Don't lose faith. You know, um, every day you know it's a new day and uh, take it how it comes, man, and just go with the flow. Hey, by the way, Sal, man, you uh, Sal won two dollars off of me at the, <laughs> on the UFC fight. Sal, <laughs> I want those two dollars back, bro. Next UFC, man. But, but um, hey, man, dude, it, it's such an inspiration. It's such it's such a pleasure to have you on the show, man. Is there any last things that you want to you know share with the people before you before we end the show? Uh, I mean, just you know, just you know, shout out to everybody out there, and you know, and uh, I appreciate all the support, you know, all the love that we get. You know, we get a lot of messages, a lot of a lot of fan mail, and uh, people on, on, on uh, of course, on uh, on my uh, social media, they always giving me uh, good vibes and you know, and positive energy, and 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 I need more of that. So you know, so everybody out there, you know, keep it coming. Keep it coming. <laughs> you know, you can find me on any, any of my social medias. It's all big Citric, just B I G C I T R I C, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Facebook, just look for Anthony Campos, Citric, you know, and uh, just, you know, positive messages is what keeps me going every day, you know. I love to hear positive messages, all the, all the positive feedback from everybody. And, of course, you know, uh, just stay solid, you know, keep it 100, solidkings.com. Yeah, man. And shout out to uh, Joshua, who just got diagnosed with, the, um, you know, cancer. Oh, wow. Uh, but, hey, hey, buddy, Josh, man, we're right here rooting for yeah, you. Just hang in there, man, you know. Yeah. Hang in there. Just you hang in there. Don't lose faith, man. That's right, brother. Stay and solid. Yeah. And shout out to uh, Valerie and all the kids and, and everybody that's tuned in tonight. Anybody on Facebook, social media, Instagram, you know what the deal is, man. We keep it going. Much success to you, Citric, man. Appreciate it, man. We Thank will you. continue to support you here at Radio Suerte. Anytime you want to come back, man, and, and you know, collaborate on something, you're always welcome. My doors are open to you, brother. Yes, yeah, congrats, because honestly, you represent La Raza, and that's what we need. You know, you yeah. by being you, you know, you're not trying to be anyone else. You're yeah, yourself. no, we'll talk yeah. Honestly, it is, and that's what we need, and I think that's why you're, you know, your success is here. Yeah, uh, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you guys, you know, for uh, bringing me on. One more thing. Freddie uh, Lopez wants to know how he can order a shirt. What's the URL again? Uh, SolidKings.com. SolidKings.com, Freddie, man. You heard it right here. Sancho Loco Show. Thank everybody for tuning in today. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>